Hello friends! Long time no see. Today, after a long break, we will learn how to create a pretty fast pattern scanner. How fast it really is depends on the situation, but on average it is much faster than the brute force method introduced in my older video called pattern scanning in C++. You guys told me more than once that I'm rushing things, so today I'll try to take enough time to explain things in more detail. And instead of writing the code as I explain, I show you the finished code, go through it and explain the parts in retrospective. Let me know if you prefer this style after watching the video. But you know what I like a lot more than materialistic things? Knowledge. That's a hacking group we've been reporting on that's claimed responsibility for recent attacks. The longtime friends amongst you already know what's next. Before coding, we gotta cover some theory. In the intro, I talked about the brute force method. In the context of pattern scanning, this means always moving one step followed by one or more comparisons. As an example, let's say we have this pattern and this chunk of memory to compare it against. The question marks in the patterns are wildcards, meaning at those locations any values are acceptable. With the brute force method, we start at the first location in memory and in the pattern and we compare the two bytes. They do not match, so we move the pattern one step to the right and again compare the first byte in the pattern but now with the second byte in memory. We repeat this procedure until we have a match between the first byte in the pattern and the byte in the current location in memory. If we have a match, we then proceed to the second byte in the pattern and compare it to its counterpart in memory. If they do not match, again we move one step to the right until finally we have stepped all the way through memory or ideally until we found the location in memory where the whole pattern matches. Again, this was the brute force method. Reliable, easy to implement, but slow. Now let me show you a more complex but faster algorithm. The main idea of this algorithm is to move by more than one byte if possible. By doing so, we obviously need less steps overall and we are faster. But how many bytes can we move without checking? While making sure we do not step past the location we are looking for by accident. Let's consider some situations. First situation is we compare one byte in the pattern with one byte in the memory and they do not match. On top of that, the byte in memory is not at all present in the pattern. This means that not only does the byte in memory not match with the current byte in our pattern, it does not match with any byte in our pattern. Therefore, we can move our pattern to the right until it is completely past the byte in memory. Now if we start the comparison from the left, this does not help much. We still only move one byte to the right and the pattern is already past that byte in memory. But if we start the comparison from the right, this is a completely different situation. In fact, we can move the pattern by the size of the pattern to the right. That's very nice. We now saved many comparisons. And this is the reason why this algorithm, we start the comparison always on the right side of the pattern. Next situation. We have to compare the last byte in the pattern with the current location in memory and again we do not match. But this time the byte in memory does exist in our pattern just at a different location. So now we cannot move the pattern as far, because we would run the risk of potentially missing the correct location. But what we can do is move until the correct byte in our pattern matches with the byte in memory. In case the same byte is stored multiple times in our pattern, we move until the first match occurs. Last situation is pretty trivial. We compare the last byte in the pattern with memory and we have a match. Well, in that case we proceed as expected and compare the next byte in our pattern going from the right to the left until we have a mismatch or until we have checked the whole pattern without any mismatches. As soon as we have a mismatch, we proceed as we did in the first two situations. Meaning we again look how far we can move based on the byte all the way to the right in memory. This was quite a bit of theory, in summary. We compare right to left because this allows for maximum potential movement. 
If the rightmost byte in memory is not at all in our pattern, we move the pattern to the right until that byte will no longer be compared with our pattern. Or in other words, we move by the size of our pattern. If the rightmost byte in memory is in our pattern, but at a different location, then we move the pattern until the bytes match. This was the horse pools algorithm in all its glory. But we did not take something into account which is very important, uh, the wildcards. First the easy part. If the byte at our current location in the pattern is a wildcard, then we do not care what byte is in memory at that location. In other words, we proceed as if the two bytes did match and continue by comparing the next two bytes. But there is a second part. People often miss this part and their code is wrong. I hope you really understood the algorithm so far, because only then you will spot what is missing here. Let's highlight the part we need to change. Without considering wildcards, if the two bytes do not match and if the byte in our memory is not at all in our pattern, we would move the pattern by the size of the pattern itself. Again, we do this because we know that there cannot be any match if we were to move by a smaller size. But that assumption is no longer true by their very definition of the wildcards. They do match, in fact they match any byte. So instead of moving by the size of the whole pattern, we can at most move by the distance between the right of the pattern and the location of the rightmost wildcard. By doing this, we move the wildcard in the pattern to match with the byte in memory we initially compared our pattern against. This was all the theory I want to explain before we look at the implementation. If you did not understand it, I recommend you go back and watch the first part again. Yeah, it's rewind time. Now let's jump into the code. First, let's have a look at the scan data class. The purpose of this class is to store the memory block we search through or the pattern respectively. We use unsigned char pointers and the size, which is the amount of bytes because one unsigned char is one byte in size and can store values from 00 to ff in hex spaces. From now on I will refer to this pointer as byte array to avoid confusion. In the first constructor we initialize the size and allocate enough space to store all those bytes. We will use this constructor to store the memory of the game. The second constructor is more complicated. Here we can pass a string containing ASCII representation of bytes. This one is used to initialize the pattern. First we give the byte array more than enough space to store the bytes. Then we remove all white spaces from the input string. At this point two characters in the string each represent one byte. Next we go through the string and look at every second position, so 0, 2, etc. using i as index. But x, which is the index of the resulting byte array, only increments by 1, because each two characters in our string represent one byte. Exception of the rule, here are wildcards. In our input string a wildcard is only one question mark, so only one character. So here we only have one character in the string representing one byte. Because of that we increment i if the character in the input string at the current i is a wildcard. Inside this loop we store the two characters into one byte in our array using a fancy approach. I did not come up with this one on my own, link to the resource is in the description. To understand what is happening here let's have a look at the ASCII table. Here the character 0 has the value 48, the character 1 has the value 49 etc. Then there is a gap of characters where we do not care about, followed by a with value 65, b with value 66, etc. What we want is the value 0 to represent the character 0, the value 1 representing the character 1, etc. And then we have the value 10 for the character a, etc. So if we have a character from 0 to 9, we can just subtract the value of the character 0, which is 48, to get the byte value from 1 to 9. But for a to f this is not as simple. If we subtract the character 0 from the character a, we get 65 minus 48 which is 17 
but we want it to be 10. There are many solutions to this issue, just solve it with if else etc. But here we have a, in my opinion, way sexier solution. We create a table mapping the result of the subtraction with the character 0 to the correct hex value. For 0 to 9, this is straightforward. But again, subtracting the character 0 from the character A results in the value 17. So at the location 17, we store the correct value, which is 10, in the table. The values at the locations between 9 and 17 do not matter, we can just put 0 there. But at the location 17, we store 10 for A in hex, followed by B, etc. So first, we subtract the character 0 from the current character in our string. Then we look up the location in the table to get the correct hex value. We do this for the first and the second character. And then we have to combine those two double bits values into one byte. We can do this by bit shifting the first character twice to the left and then combining it with the second value. After the shift, the two bits in the right side are zero and the two bits in the left side of the second character are also zero. So we can OR those two bytes together to get the final result. In the destructor, we delete the data, which means we free the memory used to store the byte array and let the destructor of unsigned char pointer to their thing. Last function is just to print out all the bytes and it's used for debugging. Now let's analyze the main function. Since this hex is external, we first of all need the handle to the target. I will not explain this function here. If you do not understand it, watch a more beginner friendly video. Next, we initialize the pattern using a string. Then we initialize an instance of scan data to store a part of the game's memory. In this case, we just pass the amount of bytes. And then we read the memory starting from some location. Next, for comparison sakes, we time how long the brute force method takes to find the pattern. So let's have a look at the brute force method. I already explained this method in my older video, but just real quickly. We loop through the game's memory one step at a time. And inside we loop through the pattern and compare it to the game's memory, comparing each byte. If they do not match, and if the pattern has no wildcard at that location, we break the inner loop meaning we move the pattern one step to the right and start comparing again. If they match, we compare the next byte. If we compared all bytes without any mismatches, we return the found location. Back to the main function, next up we time the horse pool algorithm, which is of course the really interesting function in this project. So let's analyze this function. Remember, this algo is all about making big moves. Moving as much as possible if there is a mismatch. Before we start comparing bytes, we shall figure out how far we are allowed to move based on the byte in the game memory. So what we do here is create a dictionary. Each location in this dictionary represents one hex value, starting at 00 and ending at FF. That is 16 times 16 equals 256 locations in total. Remember, the maximum amount of bytes we are allowed to move ever is the distance between the right end of our pattern and the rightmost wildcard. If there is no wildcard, then we use the size of the pattern instead. Here we find that maximum value. Once we have that value, we are ready to initialize the table or dictionary as I called it before. First of all, we set all values in the table to the maximum value. Next, we go through the pattern take each byte in the pattern and update the dictionary at the corresponding location to a fitting value. In our example, the first byte in our pattern is 66. So if we compare our pattern with the game memory, the bytes do not match, but the game byte is 66, then we want to move the pattern until 66 in our pattern matches with 66 in game. So how big is that move? Well, it is the size of the pattern minus the index of 66, so that's 0 minus 1. In our example, that is 10 for the size of the pattern, minus 0 for the index, minus 1, which equals 9. We update the dictionary for all the bytes in the pattern except for the last byte. 
we exclude the last byte in our pattern because if we are at this stage of wanting to move the pattern, we already had a mismatch. It would not make sense to align the pattern with the memory to match with the last byte in the pattern at this stage because that would be no movement at all, meaning the value for the movement would be zero. Now the dictionary is ready. Again, it stores for each possible byte how far we can move. Just as with the brute force method, we have a nested for loop. Again, the outer loop goes through the game memory, but notice we do not increment by one here. The inner loop goes through the pattern, but this time starting from the right. If the game byte does not match the pattern byte and if the pattern byte is no wildcard, we now increment the index of the game's memory by the allowed value stored in the dictionary for the byte in game memory. If we checked all positions in the pattern without any mismatches, this pattern index is zero. We found the pattern and return it. And that's it. We did it, friends. One more tip to all of you who made it this far. The larger the distance between the rightmost wildcard and the end of the algorithm, the faster the algorithm becomes. Use this knowledge to your advantage. For instance, it helps to extend the pattern to the right as long as there are no wildcards. Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. Talk to you again, hopefully in the not too distant future.